We were wondering if maybe you wanted to perfect your Irish accent, bake some soda bread, dye some stuff green, and maybe even eat a little pie. I can't wait. And it's all coming at you on today's St. Patrick's Day episode of The Wonderly Way. <laughs> Get it? Because today's Pi Day, it's 3.14, but St. Patrick's Day is coming too. Let's kick it off with Lana McKissick and Nathan Moore as they teach us how to perfect our Irish brogue. Hi, I'm Lana McKissick, and as St. Patrick's Day is right around the corner, who better to teach you how to do an authentic Irish accent than a half-Japanese, half-Scots-Irish lady? Step one. Pronounce your R's very hard. For instance, R, where's the pot of gold? I'm pretty sure that's a pirate accent. No, it's, it's Irish. Give me all your booty. Pirate. Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. Definitely pirate. Oh, come on, dude. Step two. When you're out and about in Ireland, say things like, top of the morning to ya, or where are my lucky charms, or no, I'm not a leprechaun, I'm just Irish. You racist. Step three, replace the sound th, as in thought, with a t sound. So, the commonly used tongue twister, I thought a thought, but the thought I thought wasn't the thought I thought I thought, the thought I thought I thought had been the thought I thought and wouldn't have thought so much, can now be said as, I taught a tot, but the taught a tot, but the taught a tot, it taught it, the taught a tot, it taught it, but the taught a tot, it wouldn't have taught so much. Step four, remember to end every single sentence up. So it's like a question. For instance, if you were to rob the bank, you would go up to the teller and you would say, give me all your money, put it in this tuffle bag. Why are you laughing at me? Fine, I'll try another bank. Step five, disregard all the previous steps because I don't have a clue how to do an Irish accent. Make sure you practice on a daily basis with the following phrases. Ginny, where's my pot of tea? I told you I wanted it at three. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you. Arr. Pirate. Potato famine. Oh, I think I've got it now. Maybe give it some more time. For more of Lana's sketch comedy, music videos and vlogs, check out her channel, Lana McKissick. And get some more info in the wee little description below. <laughs> Irish soda bread is one of the first breads I ever made. And the reason is because it is so easy to make. And I actually got it from Martha Stewart's baking handbook and I think Martha knows a thing or two about baking. First things first, preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Now I'm going to go through this next part a little quickly, so if you want to get the exact measurements, look in the blog post that I linked to in the description. So first we're going to start in a big bowl, we're going to put our flour, sugar, caraway seeds, salt, and baking powder. Then we cut in the butter. Now you can do this with a pastry blender, but I just use my hands, get a little down and dirty. <laughs> then we fold in the raisins, which add a great contrast to the salt and the caraway seeds. Also, by the way, if you don't like caraway seeds, you can skip them, which I would not do because I love them. If you like rye bread and you like that extra crunch and the texture, do the caraway seeds, trust me. Now in a separate bowl, I just use the bowl that I put the raisins in, you're gonna wanna mix your buttermilk, egg and baking soda. Once that's mixed, you're gonna put that into the flour mixture. Work it all together, but don't overwork because it might get tough. Mix it together until it's just set, and then you're gonna put that onto a baking sheet, and you're gonna make a round dome about eight inches across. Now, you're gonna mix an egg yolk with some heavy cream, and then you're gonna brush that over the top of it so you get a nice glaze. Then you're going to cut a cross over the top. You can cut a little deep just so that it, when it plumps up, you still have the cross shape over it. And then you're gonna pop it into the oven for about an hour and 10 minutes. Halfway through, rotate it just so it bakes evenly. And then, voila, it is done. So now, enjoy. The easiest way to get into the St. Patrick's Day spirit is to wear your finest green. <laughs> But it is also fun to get festive with a little green food dye. Be warned though, sometimes shamrocking your food into submission can make it look like it's taken a little turn for the moldy. So we thought it would be fun to give you some do's and don'ts to St. Patrick's Day dyeing. Do pancakes. There's no more festive way to start your day. Don't do the milk. You don't want to drink something that looks spoiled. Do 
cupcakes. There's nothing easier than squeezing a few drops of green food dye into the icing, which will elevate it from every day to special occasion. Don't do eggs. Dr. Seuss was right. I do not like green eggs and ham. Do sugar cookies, and a little green food dye will go a long way. Don't do ketchup. Remember they actually made that stuff? And it looked like something you forgot in the back of your fridge. It was so gross. It was... Maybe, maybe your fridge, Hannah, but let's get back on track. Don't pets. The Wonderly Way does not condone cruelty to animals. Well, of course not. Also, but... don't do fish, or shrimp, or books, or phones, or Q-tips, or wingtips, or siblings, or rivalries, or witches that aren't sufficiently wicked. Do post your St. Patty's Day greens on Tumblr with the Wonderly tag, and we're gonna share some of our favorites on the Wonderly blog. So Hannah, how's your pie day going? It was pretty great, but I gotta tell you, I haven't had any pie today. Well, I've got one in the oven. You do? Yeah, it should be ready in 3.14195. Oh. I get it, <laughs> I get it. If you made any of the projects from today's episode, let us know in the comments. And you can hit us up on Tumblr with the Wonderly tag. Also be sure to like and subscribe for more from us next week.